in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is Growing in Grace, Daily Reflections uh, with you, Mrs. Anne Mareka. Welcome to our readings today. Today is the Wednesday, 30th of September, 2020, 26th week in Ordinary Time. We thank God for bringing us to the end of this month. All glory and thanks to him because uh, there are many people who have not seen this last day of September. And we thank God because we do not even merit it, but every day he decrees and declares everlasting love for us. I always get encouraged in the morning, uh, you know, when you arise, uh, it's good to acknowledge that indeed it is the day that the Lord has made, that you may rejoice and be glad in it. And this is in Psalm 118 verse 24. And if you go to Psalm 118 verse 17, again you decree and declare because the moment you arise you are prone to, anything can happen to you it is only the lord who knows your fate for that day so it is good to de arise and decree decree psalms 118 verse 17 that says i will not die but i will live to proclaim what god has done so today our first reading is taken from the book of job chapter 9 verse 1 to 12 and then 14 to 16. And then uh, the responsorial psalm has been taken from Psalm 88, uh, from verse 10 BC to 11, then 12, 13, and 14 and 15. And our gospel of this day has been taken from the gospel of Luke, chapter 9, verse 57 to 62. And I will read from the gospel. I will follow you wherever you go, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, Jesus and his disciples were going along the road. A man said to him, I will follow, follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. But he said to him, Leave the dead to bury their own dead, but as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at home. Jesus said to him, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit, fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, for many years I used to read this Word of God and I could not understand when when, when, you know, when, especially when I would read that, you know, that person who Jesus asked that you follow, and he says, let me first go and bury my father, and let me go and say farewell to my, you know, my people. Um, but now, reading the word of God, which is new every day, which has a new revelation every day, I have learned to believe, uh, I used to think that that is very rude and that is very bad. Uh, but uh, when I meditate upon the word of God, uh, like today I have a new revelation and I say it and encourage each one of us, every day you reflect on the word of God. It doesn't matter how many times you reflect, you, you get a new revelation. To, you know, this person asking, follow me, you should not even question, I follow you, I... I, I should allow the, the dead, you know, those who are burying the dead to continue burying the dead. And uh, I'm called to proclaim the kingdom. And I, 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 I take it like, yes, I'm going to bury my father, but let me go and proclaim the kingdom of God in that burial. Let, let me be the icon. Let me be that pillar that people will know that this person, my father who has died, is not a means to an end. It is a beginning of a new life. Let us pro let me proclaim the word of God even when I go to, to bury the dead because uh, the, the, one of the works, uh, the works of mercy is burying the dead. Uh, there is no contradiction here. Is 
let me go and bury but with Jesus in me following Jesus and following his hope and decreeing that he lives so that we can face tomorrow decreeing that there is life after after death it is just another door that we are ushered to and also saying uh, you know goodbye to my family you know farewell from my home farewell mean uh, you know I, I think it is just to decree the kingdom of God to them and telling them this is the way and uh, you know being having that uh, uh, departure that uh, also leaves them uh, you know craving and uh, thirsting that they may also follow Jesus so this is the revelation I get today that I will follow Jesus wherever I go if I go to wherever I go and in whatever circumstances that I face I should be able to arise and uh, and follow Jesus um, that I should, uh, you know, the other lesson that I have learned today is I should not be attached to the created things, to the, to also the the, the people that uh, are around us. Uh, we get so attached to our children and, uh, you know, at one point in life they will have to separate from us. We will not, they will not need us and, you know, we will need them because we need to, to ensure they are still okay and everything. But the moments come when they leave and they don't even consult you in anything and you're left with your Jesus. You start with your Jesus when you're praying that you get these children. But again, when they leave your house, wherever, wherever they go, then you're left with the same Jesus who started with you. So a call for us to always know that Jesus matters above everything else. The greatest commandment was like, like, is, is that we love God with all our hearts and with all our mind and our strength. And then we'll be able to be able to easily detach ourselves from created people, created things and the possessions that we have. Uh, you know, also be able to detach ourselves with our, our, our happy lifestyles, you know. We should have moments of sacrifice, moments of going out of our comfort zones and be able to follow Jesus even when he does not have a home, when he ha has no place to lay his head. You know, when he, you know, he says that the Son of Man has no, no place to, 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 to lay his head. So even, you know, a call for us to follow Jesus when it doesn't even make sense. We, when we have to sacrifice a lot of time, our talent, our, uh, and be able to, to, to also be charitable to those who need our help, those who need our talent. Like today, the Lord has given me, uh, you know, free of charge to preach the word of God. And it is not about me. It's not that I'm the best, but I offer what I have. The Lord is calling us to offer the little, that talent that you have, that singing that you can sing, that word of God that you can share in boldness. And he's going to perfect you. You do not have to be perfect. He's going to perfect you. Uh, I call again for us to be obedient, uh, you know, to the missionary spirit, you know, of, of proclaiming the kingdom of God. Uh, a moment for us also to sacrifice and follow Jesus even when it doesn't make sense you know we can never get enough time in this planet earth the other day I was asking my husband is it that the days have become shorter because I find there is a lot that I need to do but time does not allow me by the time I'm finishing this darkness has come there is a curfew and I'm not able to fulfill so many things but you know 24 hours remains 24 hours so what do you do with that time let, let uh, you know, a call for us to give 10% of your time for the mission of God, you know, the work of God, the service of God. Even when we are drowning in poverty and sickness and in sin, let us not forget that Jesus still loves us. Let us follow him even when we are stinking because he will not leave us. He will not reject us. You know, John 6, 37 says, I will never reject anyone who comes to me. Let us today meditate and ask ourselves, what is that that separates us from the love of God? We read from the book of Romans, you know, that we need to give up comfort to serve, um, you know, to, to the service of Christ with our possessions, with our time, with our talents, sacrificing for our brothers and sisters and also the needy and the poor and those who are struggling and suffering, arising to pray, also to intercede. 
for, uh, and also to pray for conversion of sinners and especially conversion in our own families. A question for all of us today, are you ready to give your lives to Jesus without reserve? Are you ready to carry your crosses and follow Jesus? What is it that distances me from following the way of service to God? Am I lazy in being charitable with my goods and my talents? And I want to conclude uh, with the responsorial, with the responsorial of today that says, "Let my prayer come into your presence, O Lord." Let us not give up in prayer. I was sharing with my friend last, last night and I was saying, I am so lazy to pray now. I feel so empty. I have prayed and I don't see any answers coming through. And I was f feeling so crushed. And this is a call for us to, through the responsorial psalm, to say, you know, to continue crying out to God. Let us not give up. The word of God says, I call to you, Lord, all day long. To you I stretch out my hands. Will you work your wonders for the dead? Will the shades rise up to praise you? Will your mercy be told in the grave? You know, the psalmist, you know, David was lamenting, but still giving thanks to God and saying, if you, O oh Lord, do not accept the, my praise, then the graves, you know, the graves will not help. You know, that place of feeling like God has... Uh, has forgotten you and I was sharing with my friend I said imagine I'm not even able to say the rosary there are some days that pass and I'm just asking God why I'm not why, why have you rejected me why am I not feeling your presence and from the story of Job it's the story that continues we know the this whole story I said it's a beautiful story for you to read chapter from chapter so that you see what he went through but in this chapter 9 Job acknowledges that God is still on his throne in spite of all the loss of his earthly possessions and climaxing with the loss of his children, he still address decrees before his friends and say, God is wise in heart. He is mighty in strength. No one can withstand him. He does what he wills with all creation and created things. Without notice, he does what he wants. He did not give any notice that Job's children would die, all of them at the same time. He, you know, but it happened. But he acknowledges and says that God does not need to give anyone notice. But what we can do is to continue trusting in him and know that he's ever ready to lavish us with good benefits and give us, reward us with long life. Um, I want us to meditate upon uh, the suffering of Job as we combine that with uh, that love of God that uh, uh, will push us to giving ourselves for service to God without any reserve, without reserve here. Yeah. Today offer your sufferings, your current predic predicaments, offer your current suffering and, and sicknesses and hopelessness and your financial constraints, offer all of them to God. Do not give up on yourself, do not give up on God. He abounds in love, mercy and compassion. And we pray, Lord Jesus, walk with us today, even when we feel downtrodden, that there is hope that you will never leave us, that you're always ready to hear our cry. It doesn't matter how long it takes, but Lord, we know that uh, you come at the right time according to your own will, and we cannot interfere with your will, as jo Job says, and you're full of wisdom, and the plans that you have for us are plans to prosper us, to give us a hope and a future. Lord, give us your grace to do your holy will. We pray all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.